Let's do that. We good? I think we're good. Let me double check one thing. All right. And you're live. Wow. Cool. I am so right. impressed. Uh, I gotta I gotta tell you, we we didn't know how many people were gonna show up. Uh, and uh hope we planned accordingly with food. We thought it was time for celebration, getting everybody back together, uh, having some community. Uh, sense of community and in uh, this is actually district two, um, but my colleague Jeff Coughlin is here from district three and, and he's going to be saying a few words in a few minutes. I wanted to first of all let you know there is nosh what I call nosh and it's sweet and savory and there's caffeine and there's water, so whatever you need. Uh, Director Elevato bathrooms for people right. Out the door down the corner is the men's just before you go out the outside door and then just down the hall is the women's and the right. the third one down further great great then we're prepared uh wanted to let you know how this all came about and we really should introduce ourselves before I, I suppose do so. it. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> right now I'm looking again? at the mayor. I'm looking okay. at the mayor and I'm thinking we should probably introduce him too. Absolutely. We can yes. go around the room. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to hand it over so, to you okay. to introduce yourself. And Sounds good. So I heard from Denise Fry from District 2. I'm Jeff Coughlin from District 3. And yeah, big kudos to you, Denise, for kicking this off. And wanted to do a, a district meeting and you had the idea of a joint meeting which uh was a great idea to get more people in the room and everyone here and online so hopefully folks on zoom can hear okay we got a few people online um if not put something in the uh, in the chat or raise your hand we'll troubleshoot as we go but thanks for your patience as we we do really the first district meeting in a couple of years now um since since at least in person since the start of covid so people really came together to make this happen especially with the ability to do kind of a hybrid meeting where we're on Zoom as well as in person. This is our goal for the city council uh, to start doing so that we can be with y'all uh, every other week, uh, at least, if not every week. Yes. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, a huge thanks to so many staff for supporting and being here tonight. We've got Director Elevato from Parks. Thanks for using the building and the space. Um, thanks to IT, if you're out there watching from the city, for getting a Wi Fi set up in here. And, so we can stream. Uh, thank you, Ned Lever, city engineer, and Tom Nucky, director of public works. Um, thanks for your all your staff. For big thanks to Mayor Greg Wheeler for, for being here for support and, and dedicating all the staff time to helping us do this. So very, very much appreciated, Mayor. And going around the room, got Shane Weber, who will be speaking tonight from public works as well. We've got uh, Vicki Grover uh, is here to present uh, as well. And then we have Nick, and I haven't heard your last name because you're brand new to the city. Straight from Texas. A tie. A tie. All right. Well, We've welcome. been hearing about yeah. this man for a yes. while, though. Yes. So great addition to city staff. Yes. Welcome aboard. Thanks for going thanks yeah. in the city. Yeah. yeah. I just want to tee up a little bit for this evening. And so since it's a joint meeting, uh, we kind of divvied up the projects. And I also wanted to let you know what this, how this all came about. We all, of course, politicians, elected leader, leaders, whether they're appointed or elected, want to get together with y'all. I mean, there's a purpose there, right? But beyond that, there are things happening uh, in districts two and three uh, that the timing really works well to come together with you. What I did was, I don't like to waste people's energy, so I, including mine. So I sent an email out to all the uh, department heads and I said, hey, 
I want to have a district meeting and possibly council member Coughlin would be interested in a joint meeting. Does anybody have anything that would benefit the departments, you know, because we want it to work for them too. Uh, and lo and behold, Public Works got a hold of me and said, yeah, as a matter of fact, you know, so we've got in District 2, we've got a project called the Safe Routes to School uh, project, and you're going to be hearing in depth about that. Um, I will just tell you that I've been walking the district just where the impact is going to be of this project. Uh, and I actually made a woman cry the other day. <laughs> because I came up to her door. She lives on Elmira and she has no sidewalk. I drive past her house every day because I cut through on Elmira to Fred Meyer and it has toys in the front yard, nice fenced yard, toys in the front yard, and then a gully and then road. And we drive fast on Elmira, too fast. I shouldn't say we, I always obey those things that say you're going 35. Um, but you see my point. I came up to her door just to let her know about this meeting. And I told her what it was about and what was happening. And she started crying because she has wanted this for so long for her kids to have a decent sidewalk, you know, uh, by their house. Uh, a safe route to school. Uh, there, you know, are tons of cases like that. Uh, I want to mention a few people in the audience, though, tonight. First of all, Mayor Wheeler. This wouldn't have happened without his leadership uh, with staff and attaining the money and all of that. But we've got advocates in this room. I look around here and I, I know a lot of you and y'all are advocates already uh but we have advocates that have been working on this project for how many years advocacy trying to at least four at least four yeah 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 I live right there on yeah, yeah, very yeah. So, so that's what we're that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about tonight. Yep. Yep. Well, you're going to be hearing about some oh, yeah. stuff tonight that I think you're going to be really happy to hear. Um, so that's the Safe Routes to School project. Yep. Uh, and then, and then, yeah, 11th and Perry. Gosh, when I was door knocking last summer during the campaign, I wrote down potholes on Perry dozens and, and dozens of times. So I can't tell you how happy people are in Manette to see Perry get paved. And then 11th Street with all of our great businesses down there in Manette. Um, that's going to really come alive, not only with accessible sidewalks, but better for the businesses, which I won't steal people's thunder on the project there. Um, but maybe we're uh, walking through real quick. So we're going to turn it over to Public Works folks in just a few minutes. Um, they'll go through the presentations. We'll stop halfway for Q&A um, after the Safe Rest of School project, and then we'll get into Perry and 11th and have time for Q&A as well. So should be plenty of time for that. And then if there's anything else on your mind, just anything else in the city, Anything else for Denise and I, we're going to be sticking around after. Yeah. So we're happy to talk one on one on any other issue that's that's on your minds. So if that sounds good with folks, is there anything else? You want I don't to, think so. I think we can yeah. turn it over to sounds, or I should say, works, yeah, unless yeah. unless any of you wanna make any remarks, we've got some time. Mayor, do you wanna yeah. I think you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. It was good. I'll take it. Space. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. You know, I tell people being appointed, I wasn't prepared. So uh, it's really been a, a learning curve for me and uh, staff nice. included. <laughs> I know, I know the people who have had the campaign are very envious of me because of that. Wow. And I, get that i really do 
but I didn't have any control. <laughs> so um, anyway, stiff learning curve, but I have great colleagues. You awesome. You've got a great council. We get to we get along really well. And that isn't always the case on the city council. True. So yeah, yeah. And with the mayor. Yeah. Usually. <laughs> Usually. 99%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. With that, uh, who's up? Who's teeing up first? Director Elevato? I'm just trying to make sure this is. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So we're doing safe routes to school first. So I think that's. So we have uh, Nick Atai uh, here tonight, who's yeah. the project manager for the View Ridge Elementary School. So he's going to give a uh, brief presentation on uh, that project for everybody. And then uh, at the end of that, we'll have a QA. and a um, And then, as the counselor said, uh, then we'll have Vicki Grover uh, come up and talk about East Lebanon Ferry. Uh, and then do a quick q and after that. So uh, hang tight, and we'll open up the presentation for it. Oh. Share this light forward and back. Forward and back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wait, so how many of you are from District 2? So this is for this Yeah. How many of you don't know what district? I don't. Oh, it's yeah. Okay. Well, I'm I'm hoping later on this evening for those in district two. Um, I have a vision uh, for a new park in our district across from our library. Uh, and so far, everybody seems really excited about it. On staff. So uh, we'll see. But I'll I hope to kind of just you know kind of plant the seed in people's minds because it's going to take community development. All right. All right. All right. Well, thanks again, everyone, for coming out tonight. Nick Atai, I'm with the Engineering Division, and we're going to be talking about the View Ridge Elementary Safe Routes to School project. So uh, I thought this was a, a good photo kind of to show the context of Elmira. So this is um, looking uh, just at Nome and, and Elmira. You can see those ditches. You can actually see the walking paths where, where folks are walking. Um, so just kind of give you a, a magnitude of, of kind of the existing conditions out there. <laughs> yes, okay, perfect. I live in a green apartment building. You're waving to me now. That's why I don't walk out of the room. So a little bit about the, the Safe Routes to School program. So the Safe Routes to School program was um, funded through legislation in 2005. Uh, starting in 2005, their, the funding was uh, basically divvied up to states, and the goals of the program were to of course, enable uh, and encourage children to walk and bike to school. So um, I don't know, show of hands. I mean, how many of, of you all walked or rode your bike to school on a regular basis? Near a kid. Yeah. So if you if you look at the statistics, um, that's slowly starting to decline. So it's not just enabling uh, folks, uh, children to walk and bike to school, but it's also uh, promoting an active lifestyle, encouraging independence. So all the good things that come with, with uh, walking, riding, bike to school. Um, again, the funding uh, for this particular project was made available by the Washington uh, State Department of Transportation, and uh, it includes um, areas within two miles of the K-12 uh, school. So this specific project we're calling Phase 1, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. There's, there's potentially two phases to this project. Uh, the first phase uh, is shown here. You can see View Ridge Elementary. Uh, you've got the Kitsap Library. It uh, starts at the frontage of View Ridge Elementary, of Spruce, East on Sylvan, and then up Elmira to Ivy Road. That will be the first phase. There is a second uh, phase of the project that uh, the city has submitted a grant request for, which would continue the project from Ivy up to Riddell. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a little virtual walkthrough from the, from the school. So starting at uh, View Ridge up Spruce, um, primarally is going to be a shared, what we call shared use, uh, shared use path, which will be a uh, generally a 10 foot wide path from the school. Again, that's where a lot of your traffic is going to be funneling into the school. Is that right where the post office is? Uh, so this is at the uh, 33rd, between th East 33rd and the school. Going from East 33rd up to uh, Sylvan would be a six foot wide sidewalk. So you can see the condition of the existing sidewalks, probably about a four foot sidewalk now. 
um, not ADA compliant. So folks in a wheelchair still are very, very challenging. Um, and obviously at the intersections, we're gonna put in ADA curb ramps to make those, those compliant as well. Um, as we uh, approach Sylvan Way, um, so there is an existing uh, mocked crosswalk just east of Spruce. Um, this project will uh, install two what we call RFBs. So they're uh, the flashing beacons. If you've ever seen a crosswalk, you can press the button. It's got the, the, the flashing lights that were the motorists. So uh, there's going to be one near the intersection of Spruce and then another near the intersection of Elmira. Um, again, improving the sidewalks on uh, both sides of Sylvan Way between Spruce and Elmira um, with the ADA curb ramps as well. As we approach Elmira, so this is where the majority of the, the major improvements are going to be. Um, it's going to be a full reconstruction of the, the roadway uh, while we're doing these, these uh, sidewalk and, and bicycle improvements to uh, kind of minimize impacts to the neighborhood at one time. So uh, that'll be a six foot sidewalk on uh, both sides of the, the, the roadway. Um, there, uh, the bicycle facilities will be a five foot striped uh, bike lane. Uh, with the lanes kind of reduced to 10 and a half feet. So if you um, look at how wide the, the pavement is in Elmira right now, uh, once you get to where the, the ditches are on the side, it's going to be about a five to 10 foot uh, increase in the pavement width to accommodate the travel lanes and bicycles. Uh, and of course, those ditches will go away. There'll be curbs on the street uh, adjacent to the sidewalk, and then all the storm drains will be taken under the street. Uh, again, just some photos, again, showing the context of the area. Um, there will also be some pedestrian level lighting to be added. And then we talked a little bit about the speeding concerns. So we're gonna be looking at um, additional traffic calming. Um, this could be a combination of many uh, traffic circles, uh, perhaps an IV. Um, this could be um, speed feedback signs. So we'll be working with our uh, engineers to kind of look at options and the residents kind of work through some of those options and get through the design. Um, and then also, uh, we're going to take an opportunity to look at uh, bicycle connectivity uh, between uh, Sylvan and Sheridan. Uh, this is kind of reflective of the 303 corridor plan, uh, looking to connect that bicycle route uh, to the south of Elmira. Uh, so we're going to take this opportunity again to look at potentially some property east of the library and down through the east side of the, the school property to uh, identify areas where we could route that bicycle. Uh, funding for the project, so the, the grant is uh, um, awarded to the city. It's just over $4 million for this project. Um, there is going to be a uh, partial city-funded element. Uh, primarily, that's for the street reconstruction on Elmira. Uh, unfortunately, the, the, the terms of the grant only allow for the actual sidewalk and bicycle facilities to be included in the grant. So um, this is the estimated project cost at this time. Uh, and schedule wise, so uh, um, the, the grant was uh, applied for in 2020. At that time, the state did not have sufficient funds um, to award the grant to us for this project. Uh, but we actually were notified um, just earlier this year that they, uh, they found some funding for us. So uh, we got that notice of grant award in July. Uh, we'll take uh, this formally to the, uh, the council um, next month and we'll start engineering design this fall. Um, there's quite a bit of work we have to do as we work through the, uh, we think about the utilities under the street, the, uh, the franchising utilities, the power poles, um, you know, any kind of property impacts, a lot of um, kind of technical things that we have to work through. Uh, we're looking at pre-construction approvals uh, into 2025 with story construction early 2026. So uh, I know that's a big gap. Uh, one of the things that we are uh, looking at right now is if we do get awarded funding for the phase two, which would extend the project from Ivy to Riddell, we would look to consolidate those projects into one uh, large project. Um, so that's kind of where we're at now. Again, all subject to change based on you know advancing or um, any uh, engineering related items that come up during the design phase. So with that, I would be happy to answer any questions. We've got uh, Shane here, our engineering manager. Appreciate uh, Yes. So the get off the speed. The Southern Way has 16 foot lanes in each direction. It's really hard. There's very little fun you know, the, you know, the, the crossing there is uh, kind of critical, right? You know, what, what do you do to do that on there to, uh, to narrow the lanes? Was there any 
like a bike lane or something to slow traffic or so Yeah, far. I might defer because I know that there was some talk about bike lanes on uh, Sylvan, but there were some challenges with that as well. So. Yeah, you know, there are places on Sylvan where we do have one wide uh, pavement, uh, just in terms of um, where, um, you know, putting in an edge strike uh, to create a bike lane uh, works, but there is a pinch point uh, on Sylvan that. Um, that makes it difficult for us to have enough lane operators to get away to two lanes. We don't have the width of it to be able to go by lanes. Um, and so uh, we look at that as part of uh, the discussions with the DOT as part of this project. Hey, Shane, yes. can you step around the front? Because we got some people oh, that yes. probably yeah. think yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Thanks, Ned. Um, yeah. And so we, we looked at that as part of uh, the grant application uh, with the DOT. We did discuss it with them. but. Um, you know, uh, as a result of the conversations with them and the challenges that we had in, in removing that left turn pocket and trying to get that through there, um, we uh, made uh, a compromise to take a shared use path uh, approach um, to uh, route uh, bicyclists that way um, as part of this project and with this grant. And, um, and so uh, right now we're uh, at this point as part of this project, we, we wouldn't be looking at striping bike lanes into there because of that issue, but uh, that's not to say that we can't do that, uh, look at that in the future. So, but just now it's part of this project. Yes, Diane. We had talked a little bit about in the committee of taking, going parallel to Sylvan Lane, doing 33rd and going up the library. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that on the map. So what, where is oh, that right. discussion? Yeah. You yeah, had about can... Sylvan Lane instead of 33rd, I think it is. Yeah, so um, so the original grant, what we had was we had, um, uh, we needed to connect up the pedestrian facilities to the school. That was a condition of the grant. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, what we uh, worked out with the original portion of the grant was updating all the sidewalk on Sylvan Way, mm -hmm. um, as well as putting in the, the new sidewalk because um, the DOT was really worried about us being able to get um, pedestrians um, and bicyclists up to the school entrance as part of a condition as part of the grant. Um, and so we are upgrading sidewalk as part of Silver Way. Um, but um, as Nick mentioned, uh, we have um, a uh, we have a, a 303 corridor study um, in which we have a major leg of our uh, north-south uh, multimodal path that's going to be going from um, Almira, actually goes up Almira to Riddell Road. Um, and so uh, what we're going to be doing as part of this project is we're looking at um, uh, alternatives or uh, to uh, put in a shared use path between Sylvan and Sheridan. Um, and so we don't know exactly where that's going to be yet. Um, and that's all part of this design process to kind of sort of sort that out, come up with alternatives, uh, talk to um, the public and the neighborhoods and see, you know, at the end of the day, what would be the best approach there. But, um, but for sure, what we're going to be doing is bringing that shared use path um, to East 33rd um, and then uh, down 33rd into the school is what the, uh, the approach is right now. Um, but we need to get through this design process to figure out if that's the alternative that we need to move forward. So that's a little bit of an unknown right now, uh, but for sure we're going to be taking some sort of shared use path uh, down to the school. Um, and whether or not we go down 33rd or 31st, um, we'll need to look at those alternatives as we uh, get into the design requirement. In my neighborhood, um... At 3.30, I'm sure Mark can tell you that happens all over town is the traffic of picking up kids. So integrating the traffic pattern and the parents picking up kids with all of that has got to be a, a difficult task because it sure bugs up our neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, that's part of why we wanted to have an alternative mm -hmm. right in through here so we can, yeah. uh, because when you're scoping out the job we're talking about initially, there's a lot of dynamics that go into how how we route the shared use path. First of all, we don't know how it's going to go from shared use Sylvan. Uh, and then the second part of it, we, we um, there's several options to get up to the school and we need to figure out all that dynamic with, uh, you know, pick up and drop off, how the traffic circulation is going to be, uh, where pedestrians are routed and bicycles and how we do that. That's all part of how we're going to need to um, look at it to come up with a design that is, um, you know, that fits the community and fits that area. Yes. We've uh, we've coordinated with uh, Marco Chico, who's here uh, with Bradenton School District. He's uh, the director of transportation. Um, we started out with uh, planning with Marco um, a couple of years ago. Um, we've met with the, uh, the principal of New Ridge Elementary. They're keyed into the project, uh, and they're going to be a pretty important um, stakeholder as we move through the design process of this project um, to. 
uh, ensure that um, this project works in the school and also works in the community. Yes, I agree with you. And I can't see either. I know the school district is looking into replacing several schools in the district. At this point, we're not anywhere near close to that. That's the only moderate mind that's left. I'll replace it, Marco. I wonder if we can like it. So we're trying to. If, if I could, I'm going to use this opportunity okay. if I may, yes, absolutely. Uh, because the slide here, one of one of the many planets that I see coming into alignment for a possible park, and I'm looking at school district folks because this is school district property. Um, I live <laughs> right up here at uh, uh, Halverson and 33rd, so I know this area really well. And I see the kids trying to get to school. <laughs> and I see kids who aren't playing uh, soccer because they don't have fields. But I walk past empty, barren fields every day. And I'm just wondering, Bremerton School District property, I know, and it's got to fit in with the grand scheme of Bremerton School Dr District, obviously. But this possible shared use path, this, you know, bike route and everything. Come on, is that perfect or what? And this area here for my peeps in District 2 that like to go walking in the, what I call the urban forest, I think that should be a city park. I think that should stay green. You know, I mean, yes, yeah, stay green. Stay green. This is a homeowner from District 2. Yeah. I did. Proposing would take away green. If anything, it would preserve. You want to add multi-use family. You want to get rid of the football. I did. I did say and this is this is a important thing. This is important. The director's are looking at me and saying, "Well, you know, she's learning isn't she?" Yeah. This is this is important. The directors are looking at me and saying, "Boy, she's learning, isn't she?" Um, I've been through this. I've been through much harder than this. I used to train police officers in domestic violence, so uh, uh, or at least how to respond to it. So I really appreciate your input. What I said was there will be density in housing coming up the corridor. There will be. There, are um, there already is, but there will be more because we have an incredible lack of housing in our community. But we want to do it right. You know, we want to do it right. And so having green space, open green space, is critical to our area if it's going to be redeveloped. It's well absolutely one, critical. One thing about those fields, those are these old, those are these old football season, soccer season. My son and I go to the soccer team. We just need to talk about it. So with all the respect, those fields are well used. You go down the right now and see all the plants for kids that have legacy that have been there for 50 plus years. So I just want to make sure that we're I'm so glad I'm so glad you're here. I really am. And I I was the one that, that told you, remember? It's really important for your voice to be here. And I'm straying from the focus of the agenda. You notice that I inserted myself in the <laughs> school project, uh, which I which I, I I do on a regular basis. So I look forward to more conversations because if Safe Routes to School isn't happening until what, 2025, 2026, 
what I'm taking up as far as a as open space park uh, for for residents. That's way down the road. So there'll be plenty of time. If Council Member Brian are going to stick around days. afterwards if you're talking on any other topics. So, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good question. Um, the uh, We looked into that. Actually, Vicki looked into that in the answer. She asked, this count as a school. Yes. So is there a situation between some sidewalks from the area? To the east to the west to the right from the that to the main Okay, all right. That's a great comment. Thank you. Yes. We can make sure after we get that in the uh, kind of public works mm -hmm. comment list so we can Oh, yeah. So uh, Tom asked me to talk a little bit about comp plan um, as it relates to um, uh, projects. So um, so we have a current comp plan, a uh, comprehensive plan that was passed in 2016, and that comp plan uh, outlines the projects that we look at for uh, the transportation um, of, in the city, including sidewalks. Uh, and uh, next year, we're going to be embarking on an update to that comp plan, uh, and that's going to be a great opportunity to um, uh, for uh, residents uh, to uh, provide feedback about uh, projects that they think are important um, and so that we can take that feedback and incorporate it into um, potential projects that we look at in the future uh, within the context. So city, 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 city 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 right. 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 So so we'll, we'll take down your comment and um, definitely um, help move that forward in, in that process. And then you'll have the opportunity to do that as well um, yourself if, uh, um, if that's what you want to do. Yes? Hi. A lot oh, of phone um, calls. I'm I sorry. Want to sit and stuff on the property near it behind the library. Um, and that strip is because all the new housing is coming in. And there's not a doggy park. And so I just looked at that strip. But even if you're using the ball fields or whatever, there's an area there that's already fenced that they could make now. Make a doggy park in. And all I got to do is, you know, Maybe set up a floor party might be nice, but hang some bags and seal off those those gates so they can get out. That one thing, and that whole strip could be used now. Really nice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but it would definitely have some feedback before, and then I would keep an eye on it and, and looking to see what the number of the park looks like. I asked a question about the tournaments and that park from talking about here. You want to go to the tournaments? Where is the line for the tournaments? Is that the same thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
talk to you about um, are, are you folks all aware of a run to run a customer response uh, application? Okay, so I, I didn't bring cards. Um, I, I'll, I'll write it down. Um, there, if, if there's anything that, um, that anyone uh, thinks that the city should take care of, um, or there's a problem like garbage or a knockdown stop sign or even a dead animal on the road. Um, we have a, one person whose full-time job it is to go and, and do a, an investigation of any complaint, and he'll either take care of the complaint immediately, including picking up garbage if it's in the right of way. Um, uh, if it's not in the right of way, if it's, if it's a mess on private property, we have another uh, group that takes care of that. Um, and uh, so um, uh, you can, uh, if, if you uh, look on it, if you've got a smartphone, if you do a search, for Bremerton and then number one, an app will come up. You can use that. Um, there's a phone number, it's 473-5920. You can call that. Or you can even email us at uh, Bremerton1 at ci.bremerton.wa.us. But we're very responsive. If you get a complaint, we'll typically same day on a weekday, we'll go out and investigate it and we will close the loop. Okay. And okay, it doesn't matter who's responsible for it. All the departments get that <laughs> message, so it's the best way to do it. Thank you. You're going to say first hand. So I think we had a question right here, right back to the yeah, same back right. Same, yes, back, back to the same right. 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 Um, what is yeah. your solution for slowing the traffic? I am opposed to speed bumps, so I have a handicap van that we use for my granddaughter and it sits very low and there's a lot of speed bumps. We've learned we can't go down those streets. <laughs> it will drag out and destroy the bottom of the vehicle. And we can't fix that. That's just nature of the vehicle. We have a vehicle where my daughter has a vehicle from uh, Tacoma down there with the Braun. But um, so some way to slow the traffic without using speed bumps. Or if you do use speed bumps, just enough to let people know that if you hit this at a very good rate of speed, you're going to know you hit something and end up somewhere else. So, uh, but, um, go ahead. Yeah, so at this point in time, uh, we can just speculate on some. We, we have a suite of tools uh, in our toolbox to slow down uh, traffic to traffic calm, um, but we haven't identified specific solutions um, yet. Uh, because part of what we wanted to do is we wanted to um, have some alternatives, a suite of alternatives, uh, and then to talk to uh, the neighborhood and the residents about which ones would work the best uh, and which ones that uh, we should move forward with as part of the project and uh, which ones that you really hate, speed bumps <laughs> in your case. If it wasn't um, for so, that handicap, man, mm -hmm. I wouldn't care. Mm -hmm. But right, for, right. on behalf of my granddaughter's transportation, I do care. Right. And and so that's the beauty about the, the design uh, that we're doing is that we'll we'll be able to have some alternatives uh, to be able to discuss with the community. Um, and we're going to have a community outreach um, as part of the project. There will be uh, some public meetings to, uh, with the community to uh, walk through, um, you know, at certain stages of uh, where we're at in the design to be able to get your input um, and your thoughts on, on what we're doing uh, to be able to help us in, in designing the project. So, so uh, long story short is at this point in time, um, I have I, I know of lots of different uh, ideas or alternatives that we could consider, uh, but I'd like to wait until we get into that process okay. and then and then talk to everybody and see what would be the best approach to do. I've lived on Elmira since 1992. Although our home, and, uh, it's a perfect little spot, and it was great when we moved in. Yeah, but now I believe. Anybody that lives on Elmira can has experienced 80, 90 mile an hour motorcycles. It's, oh, it's a cutthroat. It's yeah. terrible. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. Elmira is not even the bypass to Wheaton Way. I believe it's Petersville because it goes all the yeah. way from mm -hmm. and, but no Elmira gets to do it. Yeah. Even yeah. by the end of it. I love to run Elmira with that peak because I know like at night late walking and stuff. I watch them go up and most of the time they climb with nothing, but they never let they go up. Turn around. You know, so fast they go to get the two side up. They oh, really? back around and they go. They go back and forth and they look on 60 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's a nice straight roadway, and you know, people think they can speed on nice straight roadways. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's something, I mean, traffic calming is part of the project. Uh, 
uh, so we look forward to coming up with some solutions at the, uh, the neighborhood that you guys can get behind. Um, so we look forward to doing that. Uh, yes. I really like the idea that you people are taking the shared path approach. And I, I think, you know, for small communities like this, you don't need a dedicated bike lane, dedicated sidewalk, and whatever, you know. And you just don't have the space and the resources. And, and people, one of the great things about shared paths is that people develop civility towards each other. Just like Wheaton Way. You know, there, there's that horrendous stretch of Wheaton Way where, you know, bikes have to ride on the sidewalk and share it with the pedestrians. Everybody's polite to each other. Everybody's very respectful. Whereas, you know, there's some guy who, who, who insists on taking a full lane there and causing just a bottleneck there. But, the you know, for communities like this, I mean, adopting the shared path model is, is really genius. So, you know, that's the way I like to see them approach the uh, future development. It's not creating, you know, dedicated bike lanes for, you know, one or two people to per hour to, to use. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And you've got a car going this way, and there's nowhere to go but the lane gets back and talk to you. There isn't anywhere to go but the lane gets, and there's a park going this way. See, as long as you have a shared path, basically all you're saying is share the sidewalk. And that's, you know, I mean, in um, you know, in this business and designing uh, these types of multimodal facilities, I mean, it's really a blessing to have all sorts of different types of options at your uh, disposal to be able to um, to create that shared space uh, where you can um, and where where you have the uh, ability to do that. So, Yo, um, you know, there's so few opportunities for people to actually interact with each other on a very you know creative uh, civil basis, and I see a lot of that happen in when the people have to share a resource. You know, they have to defer to each other and. You know, respect each other and everything, but you don't have that when everybody's got their own dedicated lane going 30 as fast as it's possible. Yeah, it's also about the right hand. You can walk around, you can meet neighbors, see people on the sidewalk. That's right. along with it's a resource. Yeah. Right. I think there's one more question over here. Uh, yeah, uh, follow up on the speeding. Uh, has there been a conversation with the police departments in terms of monitoring those streets a little bit more? Because I know from personal experience, whenever Cop car shows up, everyone slows down 10 15 miles an hour. You know, yeah. and motorcyclists usually half of them will keep doing their thing and they'll get pulled, pulled over and either arrested for reckless driving, and the other half will actually pull over. Mm -hmm. So, we, we have had conversations about speeding with the police department now. We've, we've received quite a few complaints, um, and probably from folks in this room. Uh, and I, I believe it was last year, um, time goes, I mean, but I think last year we did put in some speed feedback signs out there. Um, partially because um, you know they do work, um, you know, in a lot in a lot of cases, and they have been known. Uh, studies have been shown that they reduce speed by you know five miles per hour in, in general. Um, uh, but the the problem is that the police department they have speeding issues all over the city, and you know, they go uh, all over the city too, um, and they can't be everywhere all the time. So um, so we did look at um, we did talk to the police department. They were out there, um, but. Uh, their their um, engagement in uh, certain ways can you know they obviously have um, look at the entire city so we have those speed feedback signs that we put up in hopes that that would help out uh, with the speeding situation um, yeah I was just wondering just because yeah. it sounds like such a concentrated area where it seems like right. a constant problem right yeah. right and and yeah it is a constant problem and that's why um, as part of the project we're going to try to common to put more of a permanent measure in, uh, to help out um, with the speeding problem. Here's the last question. Anybody yeah. Okay. Yeah. Diane, yeah. <laughs> um, my neighborhood, uh, Kitsap Lake Elementary School, you guys did an excellent job of designing Harlow Drive from the school down to Kitsap Lake. And the design of the street has slowed people down. And um, so trust the process and working with them because it's been an amazing change. A speed sign doesn't always do it, but a, a street design does, and you did a super job. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Give a round of applause, Nick and Shane. So want a coffee refill or grab some more? Not sweet. Yeah. Sweet, feel free. Get up and.
Well, I think we're over talking about quite a lot of things in the very absolutely right. <laughs> oh, you already put it up. Yes. <laughs> 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 We want to make sure that we're going to be All right, maybe another 30 seconds and we'll get going on 11th and Perry.
right, we'll go ahead and get started with East 11th and Barry. Perfect. Grab a seat. Yeah, we're going to All right, and apologies to folks online. If we do a QA, we'll make sure to repeat the questions that were asked um, before we answer them. I couldn't hear a few people in the back. Yeah, all good. And then I forgot to ask people online if they had any questions, but luckily I, I think not. If you do have questions online, I already put in the chat, but type in the Q&A, we'll make sure to get them answered. Be the project. One cut. All right. <laughs> we'll give you more than one. If you yeah. There you go. As much caffeine as it needs. <laughs> All right, Vicki, well, thanks so much for being here to talk about East 11th and Perry. Go ahead and take it away. So, <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Uh, again, my name is Vicki. Uh, All right. One more time. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Vicki Glover, and I'm a project manager with the city of Bremerton. And um, I do need notes and glasses. I am of the older age. Um, so 11th Street and Perry Avenue project improvement uh, project. Um, so this is a picture, this picture of some of the asphalt and some areas that need to be improved. Oh, and I guess I don't know how to work this. The side button. Yeah. Side button. I thought it would be yeah, the right center one. Yeah. These, this is the project vicinity map. So it's um, East 11th from Pitt to Perry. And then Perry all the way to 17. We've got a little bit of some uh, sperm work that we're going to be doing down on the south end of Perry, south of the left. So this project includes, it's a full road reconstruction. We're putting in bike lanes, two <laughs> sidewalks, ADA compliant ramps, pedestrian lighting. On 11th, we'll have what's called festival lighting. It's going to be a festival style street with nice matching furniture. And when I say that, it's urban furniture is the right word to use. And it's benches, um, uh, manette signs on the light poles, garbage cans, bike racks, bike corrals, which I'm not quite sure, Diane, yet exactly what a bike corral is, but lots of infrastructure along 11th for, uh, to make it a very nice urban environment. Uh, we are putting speed feedback signs on Perry, as that is uh, another street in our city that tends to get uh, some speeding complaints. And I think I touched on the highlights there. We're, we're, out, we're doing storm improvements. We're doing some underground utility work. But I, we want to talk about what's going to look nice that we can all see. So we have awarded to a contractor. The contractor is Sound Pacific Construction. Um, they are out of Gig Harbor. Uh, and these are our contact information. I want everybody to have this, these names and numbers. Of course, I am the one on the bottom. I'm the project manager. Ed Wagner is my full-time inspector that will be on site. Every, every minute that that contractor is working, Ed will be there. You guys can put this uh, up on the internet so we can see that. And we'll Screen those later, so it would be. Yeah, I think we can find a way to get the slides up. So, yeah, we'll work on that. Sure. Hurry, you didn't bring something to write it. <laughs> there, there you go. Uh, well, I hope to, I'm going to keep this message going because Ed, Ed, I'm going to keep this information going. We're, we're actually doing another meeting with the Manette Business Association on Monday. So, um, and I will be around, Ed will be around. <laughs> Um, and he's willing to, to share his number, but he's my he's my uh, man on the ground. So he will be like first contact. If something's going wrong out there, we talk to Ed. I And I will be out there on a, at a minimum on a, on a weekly basis, walking around the site, checking everything out, seeing how things are going. Um, and if anybody has any issues, comments, complaints, whatever it is, go to Ed if you can find him first, or me if I'm out there. Um, and if you can't find us and you have the numbers, call us. Um, the goal for, the, for a construction projects such as this is to return people's calls in less than 24 hours. Uh, if it's an emergency, we'll get back to you soon. Uh, so anyway, so th those are our main contacts. 
Um, there's a couple other members of the team that will be on site, the construction management team that will be out on site as well. Um, so yeah, it's our goal to have a high visibility so you guys can find any of us if, if you have uh, any, any problems during construction. I know it's not a favorite thing for people, but we got to look to finished product. So currently the contractor is looking for a lay down area because of how urbanized this area is, he hasn't had much luck. Um, so he's in the process of finding somewhere to store his material and store his equipment. Um, but I also wanted everyone to know so that when uh, 11th Street goes into construction, we're gonna have two parking areas for any of the businesses, customers to park. Um, so at one point in time, we'll have the south part of 11 closed. We'll finish that, then we'll move to the north side. So we've counted approximately, I've counted about 20 parking spaces that will be lost the parallel when each side is closed. So we've looked for two areas uh, to help, uh, you know, those people that can't park there, find somewhere else to park, but close enough to still walk to the businesses. And one of them is on Pitt. They're just to the south of Levitt. That, that's a kind of a gravel area um, that's open with a chain link fence. And I, I talked to the business owner there and they claim that all their uh, employees park there. And I said, well, that's fine because that is public right away, but we are going to designate that as an area for any of the uh, customers for the MBA can park, well, parts of 11 will close. The other place we're looking at is on 11th um, to the east of Perry. So both of these locations are <laughs> out of the project limits, but close enough still to walk. And I believe I counted about four parallel spots we can get there on 11th. There's a bus stop there that I'll need to get bagged and coordinate with kids at uh, transit. Um, but for now, those are the two locations. We're gonna have a message reader board that will be put up when we get to this point that will say, you know, open for business and point, help to give people guidance of where these two locations are. And we may do some signage. I have, we have a, an idea, we may do a little bit additional signage. It's really hard to mark gravel, but we have some ideas too to kind of help delineate this for people when we get to that point. There's so many there is frequently going already. It is. It's this business owner, it's his employees. Well, it's it's also people like if you go in the evening, it's full. People going to the restaurants and bars are right there. Is there an opportunity to negotiate further down where there are no parking signs or that pit avenue and then like silver car there? Is there an opportunity I, to I, sure? I think that's I, I think that is an option. That city right away is as well. So that's all open to the public. Anybody can park there. So that's a good point. Thank you. We'll look, we'll look and make sure we can get as many as we can. Okay. Also, the idea, of course, during construction is we'll be done by four o'clock at the each at the end of each day. We'll be off, you know, probably putting equipment away, but we'll be pulled off the road and then that'll be open back up then to those evening folks. Yes. So if you're going to move for direct people up for the left as you can to the Masonic Temple, are you going to actually mark parking spaces there? Because right now, that's a free for all. There's no. I don't know that we'll put any mark. Are you thinking like uh, paint marks on the just pavement? The paint, just to just like the, on the lower half there, you've got designate, you know. Just the little, little tick, mark. tick marks. Tick marks. Yeah. Say this is a spot. This is a spot. Um, one of the problems we encounter in that part of the neighborhood is people parking too close to that alley. Yes. Um, and blocking the access, and it blocks emergency access to the condos there. So, so you're saying people line up? You get enough cars lined up that they start? They start crouching right up on the curb. They don't. They don't care. Okay, that's good to know. And it'll be something that we'll consider. That's not typically something we do in Bremerton, but we are going to look at making sure to designate and get as many parking, the, the right and correct number of park, parking spaces there that we can. So thank you for your info. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention too. If you don't mind repeating the question as they come in. Oh, oh sure. Online. Yeah. Oh, sure. Now that'll be a tough one. I'll try to do my best. Sorry, I forgot. I'll try as well. <laughs> 
Okay, so this is this, this is the construction schedule from uh, the contractor. And the very first comment I want to make for everybody, please know that this will change. This is his plan as he knows it today. Um, so we, we've broken the project into four zones. So zone A is, is Paris. A and B are Perry. One and two are 11. A is from 11 just to the south of the intersection of 15. Then B starts at the intersection of 15 and goes just a little past 17. Zone one, this is what I was referring to earlier. Zone one is going to be the south side of East 11, and zone two will be the north side lane of East 11. I got a question. Um, it says zone A is supposed to start at eight, but that was like. Well, they've started. So you may not have noticed, but they've started. So they have, they've got, they have signs, which I saw their yeah, signs. The I know, I know, and I've talked to them about that, but they've got signs out. I've seen those. They have inlet protection in the storm drains for erosion control. They've done some saw cutting and they've done survey. And they've done some state. So technically they've started. And I'll get into why you haven't seen any dirt turned yet. Um, but anyway, so so this is so zone A, and just to give you a brief idea of how this will go. So zone A, they're going to start with the underground storm system, and uh, then they will start on the east side of zone A. So that's east side of Perry between eleven and fifteen. They'll start with demo. They'll do uh, then they'll start putting in curb and gutter, sidewalks, and driveways. Then they will move to the west side. Repeat demo, curb and gutter sidewalks and driveways. Then they will move on to zone B. They'll do water main work and again, more underground stormwater work. Once again, they will start on the east side. They'll do demo. They'll install curb gutter, sidewalks and driveways. Then they will move to the west side and repeat. Once that's done, then they will go through and repay, put all the subgrade material down and they will repave all of Perry Avenue from 11th to just north of 17th, followed by pavement markings. That's just kind of a general progression of work. Then when we get to zone one, which again, they'll start on the south side, the southernmost lane on East 11th, they'll start with demo, they'll be installing light base installation. Those are big, big round, uh, pieces of concrete that go in. They'll do the, the concrete work. They'll put the furniture, the urban furniture in, light poles, landscaping, and then they will pave that south, that southern lane. Then they will move on to zone two, and basically it'll be the same iteration again. Do the storm water work demo, put the light poles in, concrete work, um, furniture, poles, and landscaping. And then they will pave that lane, and then they will go through, through and do all the pavement markings for both the entire length of um, East 11. Um, and I think that's what I have. Let's see where we get to next. Questions? Access to construction. Access. Properties. Access. Uh, access to so. Here's what we're going to do for access on pair. So East 11th will never be, the full road will never be closed. So either this, the south lane will be closed and there will be two-way traffic on the north, north lane or vice versa. But there will be closures on Perry. There'll be closures on Perry's with detour routes. But local access will always have access anytime that they need it to their <laughs> Now, I know that I'm making it sound easy. You know, you may have to pull up there and they may have to move a piece of equipment or whatever to allow you in, but you're never not going to be allowed to get into your house. The other thing I'm currently working on is having a daily update that will tell you. So if you live on Perry and, and the road is closed, and they will have some equipment stacked in there, but not in front of driveways. And so when you're coming home from work at night, 
Do you come in from the south to get to your house, depending on where this moving road closure is, or do you come in from the north, depending on where they're working in order to access your driveway? I'm going to have daily communication posted that will tell people where we're, where the road is closed at and will tell, you know, who's ever most impacted by which direction you need to come in on ferry in order to access your home. And that is something we're going to be posting on a daily basis. And I won't say where I'm going to put that yet because I haven't confirmed it, but I have a location. It'll be like a Facebook or social media. They will not be allowed to make any comments. It'll be strictly informational only uh, on a daily basis for people to be able to access their homes that live on Perry. Well, how do we know where you're going to post that? I, mean, I didn't go and tell us yet. I'll let you know. know. I'll let you know after Monday. Um, so, so I have a, a card over there. Please take one. Email me. If you are a citizen that's being impacted by this project, you will hear from me the day you email. And I will tell you where it is. I just haven't talked to them about it yet. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work out, but I don't want to, I don't want to say that. But that is one of our plans to keep people communicated. About where where we're at, okay? Yes. Just sorry, you mind if I dig in that one too? That the, if you Google Bremerton projects, there's an awesome website that the uh, public works has that lists every project going on in the city. So there is a page for East Lump and Perry on that, um, and that is all the kind of information for that we have been Thank you. So over the last hi. Hi. Over the last uh, spring, uh, there's a lot of utilities. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, you're talking the franchise utilities. Yes, yes. No, it is not. Yes. So you're talking about Perry specifically? Yes. So, you know, there is, I, I'm so I, sorry, Vicki, you know, my restatement front line. Will, back all, there. will all of the franchise utilities yeah. be moved from the west side to the east side on Perry? And the answer to, to that is no. The major uh, power lines have been moved to the east side. The poles that you will see still on the west side are essentially poles. And they, you'll see a lot of them are. I, I know this are quite a ways out of the out of the right of way. They had to get easements to put a lot of those poles in to keep people in the service. They're the smaller poles, they're not as tall as PSC poles, but unfortunately, they still have a few poles on the west side. So, and as far as I know, PSC is completely done on both Perry and East 11. So, what you see not finished is Lumen and Comcast. So, on Perry not completely uh, in the know of why they're not done because I've heard people talk about all this the rolled up wire and stuff that's laying everywhere. Um, and I'm going to be reaching out to them for a different issue and I'll be sure and ask. But on 11th, um, we are not able to allow uh, CenturyLink, I'm sorry, Lumen and Comcast to finish their work at this time because some of their full, full locations will um, be out in the roadway because we're putting some bulb outs on, on the north side there and one of the poles, it's going to be close to an ADA ramp. It's it's going to be a really tight squeeze to get it in. And we can't have it sitting out in the road until we get the pole out built. So the and and we also want to coordinate and make sure that the poles go in the right locations for us. So that will happen at the same time our construction is going. I believe that's four poles on the north side of 11. will be done by Lumen. Now, Comcast, um, we have a little bit of an issue with them by the Bremerton Housing Authority uh, apartment complex there by 10th. Um, and they're trying to underground a lot of their stuff and under the conduit was supposed to be installed for them and it wasn't. So we're working with them to get that area fixed up for Comcast. So um, most of the time we like to have these kind of franchise utilities done and out of the way. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened, so we're trying our best to, to work with them um, and, and get the project done right. It's a good question. Well, I've heard a lot about that. So, uh, 
traffic in the digital space. This project ends at just a little north of Seventeen. Yep, through the intersection. One lot. But at at Seventeen Avenue, life is and so even today, before uh, the mitigation has been happening. Uh, after the project is completed, we're going to have traffic mitigation uh, and calling up to the avenue in the 17th. You know, it's just one. So, what additional traffic mitigation traffic and calling strategies are in play between the 17th and the 17th? So, uh, the question for uh, the people on the Zoom. Um, is traffic mitigation, the traffic calming that we're doing uh, on period from 11th to 17th is good, but what about uh, north of 17th where Perry opens up wider? Um, and does the city have anything um, in the plans for any mitigation? And I will turn to my friend Shane, and I, it's not that I'm aware of, but, right. but Shane knows. I'll pop up here again. Um, Shane knows. So, so we um we're very careful as part of the project though because we knew that speeding was an issue to incorporate elements in the project um and that's what is incorporated in the project we did have received some complaints up there on perry avenue uh north uh we did um i think recently um in the last six to eight months we did restrike or put in edge lines out there to try to help reduce the lanes because sometimes it has a calming effect on uh, vehicles um, and uh, apparently that may not be working. <laughs> no, I appreciate um, that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good because sometimes you know uh, you have to have the right environment for that to really work. Um, and so, uh, so we did uh, employ that strategy. We were looking at um, some speed feedback signs uh, up in that area as well, but we haven't gotten to the point of, of uh, moving forward with that just yet. So that's kind of sort of the plan up in that segment. It's kind of a um perry avenue is an interesting um roadway because it's it's an arterial for us at the city uh which means that um, arterials are highly traveled and so what we do is our arterials are mostly for mobility but this one is is not it doesn't have the characteristic of an arterial street it's like a residential street um in a neighborhood um that has just has a little bit more traffic on it so it's a little bit more complicated uh, for us when it comes to traffic uh, tools in the toolbox for traffic calming, um, it reduces the amount of tools we have significantly. So, um, uh, unless we're talking about like a major, like a, a roundabout or some major physical uh, project, uh, those are very difficult for us to, to help with speeds. So, I'm glad to hear that the, the edge lines are working, um, you know, and, and um, you know, I think um, hopefully we'll, we'll uh, keep uh, having uh, feedback. If you guys have feedback for us, on if it's not working, you need to go back out here and take a look at something different, then we'll have to do that. So, can you give an overview of then your consideration for traffic? Yeah, so Perry Avenue is an interesting one for us as well because it's on a steep uh, vertical uh, decline. Um, and um, when you have a steep vertical decline uh, like that, it's uh, we can't put in like uh, speed cushions or speed tables because they tend to launch vehicles, <laughs> and that's not great at all, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, we've had we've um, yeah, so so we've had that request, and we looked at that's not a great thing for us to do. So we're really limited in what we can do. So what we ended up doing was we ended up uh, reducing the lane width down there as well. Um, we will have uh, curb and gutter on both sides of of the street. So when you have a physical barrier there right next to a reduced lane width, sometimes that helps out even more with reducing speed. So we're hoping that will be a good um, good addition to that project. Um, we also are have some speed feedback signs that we're putting on the hill uh, as well um, in each direction. So uh, hopefully that will be a, ni a nice complement to uh, to those reduced lane widths. So that's what we're employing right now. Like I said, that's a tough, that's a tough situation for us because of that hill you know, you know, in one of the things besides infrastructure improvements, which can help with a lot of people who are well intentioned, 
but just need a little bit of a nudge. And it's not, not even a one that they might notice to slow down, which is real a real good infrastructure change. But you know, some of the folks that we deal with, they are, there's some belligerent ones who are just out to disrupt the neighborhood. And the ones that probably disturb you, and I've heard traffic um, speeding on Elmira. Um, we know these issues. And so I'm, I'm looking at budgets. I'm, I am weighing all the needs from all of our departments. We, we do not have a dedicated traffic control in the city, so in the police department. So traffic controls, you know, people, two, um, and sometimes three can be assigned for focus, and can we can we can do that for days. We don't have that now, so that works together with infrastructure improvements, with the improvements we're making, and they they do tie together. So um, just want you to know that, Jeff. You know, when you see some of the dangerous speeding, that's that's the yeah, this will change. Oh, they have one for the last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this does solid things for Yeah. 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 Yeah.
It's also right. the city and county boundaries. Yes. Yeah, see, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not just our jurisdiction right there where that intersection is. Uh, we have we have half of the road that's county. The northern half is the county. The southern half is the city. Um, and um, we we did look at that intersection um, in terms of. Uh, or I, I did talk to the county about that intersection, and it's on their list. Uh, but it's far down on, on their list. They have several intersections ahead of that uh, to do something there. Yeah, and and you know, um, yeah, I mean that's a good good thought, good thought. Um, but in, in talking with the county, that they're they're aware that that's an intersection that they need to look at, but it's it's far down. Maybe something good for the uh, the, the county is also doing a comprehensive plan along with the city, so maybe good feedback to submit to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So the, the, the county does their own plan and then the city is doing their own plan as well. Right. Right. So, you know, so that's good feedback that we can go into our comp plan next year um, and uh, and have that feedback as part of that comp plan um, update process as well. Okay, yes. Your last question is for um, the so. Okay. All right. Are there last question. Five lanes on Cherry Avenue. And if so, are there any barriers between the bike and the bike? So, so the question is, are there any bike lanes on Perry Avenue? And I'm assuming that's part of the new pro the project that we're building. Right. That's what, uh, so we're building a uh, bike lane on Perry Avenue that goes up the hill. Um, because we, we didn't have enough room on Perry Avenue to put a bike lane on both uh, the uphill and the downhill sides. It just wasn't, the right of way is really narrow right through there. Um, and so what we did is we said, okay, well, we know bicyclists can, Pick up speed down the hill. That may not be too much of an issue, but when we head have bicycles head up the hill, then they really they they take it slow. Uh, it's methodical. It's a huge hill. Um, I would like to ride in my bike, and I ride miles in my bike, right? But um, so we are putting a bike lane on the uphill side, um, and in the downhill side, it would be shares so and bicyclists will share lane with um, with vehicles, and then uh, those bicyclists who uh, are not comfortable with that will be a sidewalk there on that side of the street that they can. They can take their bicycles. So there's not going to be any kind of That's great. No, there there isn't. No, no. Um, once again, we didn't have uh, that much space within within the right of way to, to really yeah. put a big barrier. Not only a big barrier, but it's you know the small little white. Oh right, the candle the candlesticks, candle right? Candle candlesticks, candle right, right. Currently, as part of the project, we do not have that in there. Um, but if that becomes um, uh, somewhat of an issue, uh, then we can look at that. Uh, once, once. Okay. I'm sorry, you better repeat that one just because of the, uh, the loud music. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. sure. So, um, so we, we do not have in the plan right now to put in candlesticks or, or a physical separated barrier between uh, the uh, bike lane and the main lane. Uh, but in the future, if that becomes an issue, that's something we can definitely look at. So, what could we have? That's a good suggestion. We can look at that. All right. Well, I'm going to give another round of applause to Vicky. Okay. Okay. These folks, I'm always impressed at how quickly they get back to anybody who has questions when they write in, um, either finding their contact on the city website or you can always email the city council address and it'll get forward to them to answer. Um, and I'm always want to say thank you for how well you take into account public and community feedback into the plans. So it's, uh, I don't think a lot of cities have the luxury, but I'm really impressed with them. You know, ultimately, uh, it's because of people like Diane Iverson and Paul Dutkey and advocacy groups uh, that worked with the city uh, and really established those priorities. But Bremerton is going to have bike lanes, you know, bike all through Bremerton up to the county border. Uh, and so uh, we hope past that, right? We hope all the way up Almira, up to Fusan, and but that's all county lanes. So, <clears throat> uh, but we're really proud of that. I want you all to know that that you know is making Bremerton even more of a gem than it already is. And I know how hard you all have worked on that along the city center. So. And I will, city a staff and the mayor has been such a uh, supporter of that. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, staff. Great presentation. <laughs> yes. Really great presentation. And I just want to say thanks to everybody who comes and has something to say to us because that's
So thank you, everyone, for your questions. What do you think? Should we do this again sometime? Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, Jeff is going home. Oh. What have we done? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, this is fantastic. Thanks so much for coming out tonight. Let's see. And we'll mingle. Oh yeah, so yeah. we're going to stick around. Anything else we're talking about? The mayor will be around, here? I think. Yeah. And, folks, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you yeah. want to talk. To you. Yeah. Otherwise, you've heard enough. Go home. Let's Take some food. Grab more food, coffee. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone still listening online? Thank you so much. I'll end the Zoom yeah. here. Yeah. Thanks for putting up with our impromptu Zoom. Have a great Thanks night. Number five, I wanted yes. to.